So uh, I'm here with KK Newell, um, and I want to talk a little bit about this breaking news that's come out over the last couple of weeks about Demetrius Big Meech Flannery, Black Mafia family. For people that know the story of the Newell brothers, uh, KK and his brother, Dog, who are now a, a composite character on the television show BMF on Stars, um, their claim to fame is that they were the guys that really put uh, Demetrius Big Meech Flannery and his brother, Terry Flannery, on in the drug game and you know uh, became their first major wholesale kilo connect um you wouldn't know who bmf was today if it wasn't for the newell brothers um but they they were like in some ways they were like two passion ships in the night as the newell brothers you know era uh their reign was coming to an end uh, in the late 80s early 90s is when demetrius and, and black mafia family were, were flourishing and becoming these uh, these these icons of of the hip hop world of the crime world. So let's start off with before we get into this news that's been coming out about paperwork being shown that Demetrius uh, possibly cooperated uh, in the early 2010s and and helped put away a black mafia family member uh, on a series of murders. But what was your impression, or or was there any impression when you were locked up between? 91 and 2001 did you hear about what the flannerys were doing did you have any idea that they had no. grown their business to where it was no i had absolutely it was some guys who um had came in that knew them and they knew the situation that um with us with them and they would come in and they would introduce themselves you know i was i was i said okay blah, 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 blah. but far as me knowing anything about th what they was doing while I was locked up, I, I, I wasn't paying attention to it. Um, I think when I first uh, got a hold of what they was doing, it was a Jeezy song that was on. And I- Young Jeezy. Young Jeezy. It was a Jeezy song. I was riding with this guy, this particular guy from the project. And that's the first time I ever heard Jeezy. And I was like, who is that? You know, he's like, oh man, that's Jeezy. I was like, oh, okay. He say, that's BMF, Black Mafia family. I was like, who is that? You know, and he started telling me, that's Big Meech and T. I say, Big Meech and T? And that's how I got hip to him. I didn't, I didn't hear him about that. And that was about in, I want to say 2003, four, five. Or that was like the, that. you know, big. I was in, well, I came home in 2001, the end of 2001. So it had to be about 2000. Two, three. Or yeah, something so what's like interesting about Black Mafia Family, and, and it reminds me of something that you said in your book, uh, "If These Bricks Could Talk." Mm -hmm. you, see, you said, in "My era, you know, <laughs> we weren't putting up billboards. We weren't trying to market ourselves. No. You know, the no. the more in the shadows no. you could be, the better." And what's what what is most interesting to me about the legacy of Big Meech is that he subscribed to that philosophy of thought for the mm -hmm. first dozen or so years mm -hmm. of his reign. And then he was the biggest drug dealer in America. And really the only people that knew about it were kind of his inner circle and mm -hmm. people he grew up with. And I think that bothered him. So then he pivoted away from that philosophy. Mm -hmm. And it's not a coincidence that when he started promoting himself as this big drug dealer when he started putting up billboards all up and down I-75 uh, on the on the ride from Detroit to Atlanta some of them literally you know facing DEA offices yeah so I heard when you start you know uh, snubbing your nose at the government and trying to become a hip hop icon which he did mm -hmm. but the result was you know that that era of your run was two, three years, mm -hmm. as opposed to the era of your run when nobody knew who you were, who was you were. 12 years. Yeah, yeah. So it was the first time, or that was the first time you heard about him, but then did you, do you remember hearing about the bus that came down in October of uh, 2005, the mm -hmm. Operation Motor City Mafia mm -hmm. bus? I biggest was, domestic drug dealing case in American history. I was I was right here and didn't hear nothing about there it. There wasn't a lot of news about it in mm -mm. the Detroit press. Mm -mm. Because in one thing- It was kind of viewed as an Atlanta story. Right, right. I was trying to keep my ears from the streets. Right. I had got a job and everything, and I wasn't, that didn't concern me no more. You so, know, but go ahead. So, Meech, you know, him and his brother take pleas. They're away for uh, 30 year sentences for nonviolent crimes. They both went away mm -hmm. at 
around 35 ish. Um, Terry's come out uh, mm-hmm. on a, a medical compassion mm-hmm. uh, sentence reduction. He mm-hmm. ended up doing uh, 15 years. He's been out since right when the pandemic broke in 2020. But Meech isn't slated to get out until 2028. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, unless you're somebody that knows the drug game, you probably don't know who, who Terry Flannery is unless you're watching the show now, yeah. before the show. But if you listen to hip hop, you listen to rap music mm-hmm. over the last 15 years, you know, Big Meech gets name checked or shouted out on a pretty regular basis by all the biggest um, rappers, Jay-Z, Drake, Jeezy, Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so uh, Rick Ross with the the famous, uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover. You're right. Um, so he's become this, you know, I, I heard someone make a, a statement. I don't want to take credit for it, but I thought it was, it was very uh, astute where he said that, you know, BMF and Big Meech, they didn't influence hip hop culture. They were hip hop culture. Absolutely. And kind of they, they kind of still are, which makes this news that came out over the last week or two um that much more of a bombshell. So I you know I don't want to belabor this, but I'm just kind of interested in your take. It looks like one of uh Big Meech's former associates, um, a rapper. That was rapping on the BMF label, Blue Da Vinci, mm-hmm. who had a falling out with uh, Demetrius over the last handful of years, um, has been vocal on social media, kind of teaming up with a jailed member of BMF, uh, Cuffy Gatling, who was from the St. Louis crew. For people that um, need a quick primer, BMF ended up leaving Detroit and expanding around the country. They mm-hmm. had satellite Absolutely. franchises in like 20 different states. Uh, and the, there, the St. Louis crew was a very important group in the structure of Black Mafia family. Right. And Cuffy's brother, uh, Wani or Magic, was the leader of that crew. He died in prison of a asthma attack. Oh, yeah. But Cuffy didn't go down in the original Black Mafia family bust. He right. went down a couple of years later. Right. Uh, and now we're seeing some paperwork. And again, I, I don't know the context of the paperwork, but mm-hmm. there is some paperwork that has made its way public mm-hmm. that claims that Cuffey's arrest and Cuffey's conviction for these murders somehow in some way was set up by Demetrius Flannery from behind bars trying to get some type of sentence reduction and using his one of his close female friends, Mm -hmm. Tammy Cowens, as the conduit. Right. uh, Cuffey believed that Tammy was sent to him by Meech to get him to do illegal things Mm -hmm. uh, to to get to get to get to get him locked up, to get Demetrius a sentence reduction. Right. And it's, it's been a rumor that that Cuffy has been floating out there for the last four or five years, but it looks like in the last week or two, it's at least partially been confirmed. Is this something that shocks you or? Uh, yes, it, it, it shocked me. Because it, it, no, because I think before this, the image of Demetrius Flannery was the ultimate OG, the ultimate um, and I, uh, and I, uh, and someone I, that's going to stick to a code, someone that would never give anybody up. I think he's still going to be the ultimate. I do. I I really do. I think he's still going to be the ultimate OG. You know, I don't think that um, nothing's going to be taken away from him. You know, far as the street level, terms of reputation, terms of reputation. I don't think nothing's going to be taken away from and him. I don't think it can be. I don't think it can be overstated. And I think sometimes. Because he's not as big a deal in Detroit as he is in other places, it kind of gets lost. But this guy's name rings coast to coast yeah. like a, you know, John Gotti yeah. or an Al yeah. Capone. Um, I mean, the only African-American criminal I can think of that holds a candle to him is someone like a Nicky Barnes yeah. Uh, yeah. or, you know, a Supreme McGriff I'm, from I'm, New York. I'm going to tell you a story. I had a friend of mine. Was a movie star, and she was in Atlanta one time, and she went out, and she couldn't get in the club. And she, she, we talked, and she asked me. She said, "Do you know these guys?" And I said, "Yeah, I know them. I'm the one who we was the one who." She said, "You playing?" She said, "KK." 
It's unbelievable. I couldn't get in the club. Now, she's a movie star. I ain't going to name her name right now. Well, I, I'm not, I won't <laughs> name names either, but I do know <laughs> that at Demetrius's peak in the 2000s, he was romancing a number of no, this, this, Hollywood actresses. Absolutely. But this girl, he, she didn't know him. She didn't know him. And then on another occasion, just here um, about a year ago, a friend of mine is in Atlanta who I played basketball with, who was living in, he's living in Atlanta now. He asked me a while back that I know them guys. And I told him the same story. And he told me, he said, man, you're not going to believe. He said, man, that man is like God down here. I said, what? He said, man, he said it like this. He says, Deion Sanders, Big Meech, and Dominique Wilkins. I said, what? He said, man, listen, he's like a God down here, man. And I couldn't believe it. I said, man, you are joking. And so me and Meech has been communicating via however they do it now. They right. got these the JPEGs. Yeah. And, and, and I told him about the, I told him about about the situation that what I heard and he was like man yeah he laughed you know he got that little laugh after t- you know he I mean legacy is important to him yeah very very important uh so that's why I I, I wonder <laughs> what's going through his head right now again I, there's always context uh that needs to be shed in this mm-hmm. a lot of times having a conversation with a member of law enforcement can be misinterpreted as a cooperation. Um, so I still have to look through all the paperwork, but it's 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 um when 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 people see paperwork, you know, they they kind of conclude that that's that's it. That's the Bible, you know. And sometimes that's not true. Sometimes not to say it's not true or whether it's true or not, I don't know. I don't know. But they can put some things out there. That make you seem like you snitching or you a rat, as they call it. I don't even like to use that name, but you snitching. And it's not true, but it's kind of, it's not looking bright. Yeah. Well, I just, and I'll close it out, you know, with, with my two cents here. I, I've been reporting on the underworld for, you know, almost 20 years now mm-hmm. and spent, you know, <laughs> I spent days and days and days going over. Uh, FBI, DEA documents, court files, interviewing guys on the street, interviewing former federal agents and prosecutors. And my biggest, if not my biggest takeaway, one of my biggest takeaways is that 99% of these people in that world are cooperating to one extent or another. And that the people that aren't cooperators are the rare, rare, rare exception. And that doesn't mean that everyone that's cooperating, that knowledge is ever going to make it out past uh, an FBI document. They, mm-hmm. they, they're what they call dry snitches, mm-hmm. uh, someone that gives information um, secretly, but would never take the, take the witness stand against someone. Right. Well, you got the, they, they, they conviction rate right. is 98%. 99%. 99%. They, they talk about, you know, if the federal government wants to convict you of a racketeering count, you know, they could put a cheeseburger at the defense table and they could convict them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how mm-hmm. that's how easy it is. But yeah, it's 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 very easy, very easy. And I think Meech actually, it was a gamble. But I think Meech might have been able to beat his case if he went to trial back. And I, I covered the what was going to be the trial I was mm-hmm. in the court okay. when the plea deal was made. I read all those. He you know he wasn't caught on any wires. Wire he had no, no wire. wire he had no wire. Uh, n- not caught on any wiretaps. Was not caught with any drugs. Right. Um, his brother Terry was the one who was caught on all the wiretaps. Right. Uh, but you know if Meech would have gone to trial and got convicted, he was at, he was looking at life. So he decided that you know I'll I'll, I'll take the thirty year plea, come out when I'm sixty some, mm-hmm. and still have some life to live. His brother came out after half the time, and I. I know that has caused some issues between them. Yes. I know Meech feels like, you know, he's getting a raw deal from the government. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I think there's there, there's always context. And when I when I spoke to Demetrius, I said, listen, it's the gift and the curse of being who you are. Absolutely. It if, comes with the territory. Yeah. So it comes with it. It comes with it. I said, it. people don't know who your brother is. Right. Drug dealers know who your brother is. Right. Right. But 
the world. They, they, Rick Ross do, doesn't have your brother's name in the chorus of a top 10 song. <laughs> right. So, uh, KK, again, thank you so much for shedding this insight. Okay. You want to talk about OGs. This guy is the real OG. So uh, I want to have you back uh, on, a, on a longer interview for the OG podcast. But thanks for dropping in here and giving me 10, 15 minutes. It's my pleasure. Be I here. appreciate it, KK. I and re real quick, let everyone know. Uh, where they can find you. Uh, you have a book that's coming out soon. Yes, I have a book coming out um, called If These Bricks Could Talk. Um, you can follow me on um, Instagram, Alexander K. Newell, KK Newell. I'm on Facebook. Um, um, that's basically it. You know, you can follow me there. Um, it should be coming out really, really soon. Really soon. It's a three-part series. Um, uh, Three part, three part installment book. Um, very short read. The first part is a very short read, it's just giving you a, some um, information about how we came up and how we was always, always around. I read it this afternoon, so yeah. I, I give it a thumbs up. Check yeah. it out. I'm excited for the next two uh, editions. And like I said, uh, hopefully KK is going to come back and, and become a regular part of, of the OG podcast because this is why we do it for the OGs. That's right. So, uh, That's right. Till next time, Scott Bernstein, OG Pot out.